All right, looks like we have a good crowd today. Welcome. On behalf of ACUI, I want to thank you all for participating in today's program, University Esports Venues, Finding Your Path, presented by Jason McIntosh, Director of Customer Experience at GG Circuit. Today, Jason is going to help us define what the most common avenues, issues, and technologies colleges are utilizing and how to get a clear path to providing an esports space for what your university needs. Before we get started, we'd like you to know how many are, are with us. So if you could type in the chat box where you're from, your institution, how many might be joining you in that room you're in with your login, and we'll get started in just a moment. You can access the chat box by hovering your mouse over the webinar window and selecting chat at the bottom of the screen. While we're doing that, we want you to know that today's program is intended to be interactive. So if you have a question or a comment during the presentation, feel free to type it in the chat box. You can also use hashtag ACY webinars to share what you've learned with your social network. And at the end of the program, the chat box is where you'll find a link to the program's evaluation. Before you leave the program, please remember to fill that short survey out. Lastly, ACUI seeks to create both a safe and brave space for all backgrounds. Registrants opted into acceptable behavior expectations for this program. Anyone who makes hostile or discriminatory comments or is otherwise disruptive may be removed. Egregious actions could result in us limiting functionality for all participants or immediately ending the event. If you are made to feel unsafe at any time, please file an incident report at the link in the chat. We hope you feel not only welcome, but included. Now, at this point, let me introduce our host and presenter, Jason McIntosh of GG Circuit. Welcome, Jason. Thanks, Steve. Uh, thanks for setting this up for me. Um, basically, you know, I just want to take this time in the next 30, 40 minutes and talk about university esports venues. So I've been sitting in a lot of the ACUI esports panels and I, I'm hearing a lot of the same questions about how do I implement this? How do I implement that into an esports space? So I just wanted to take this time and start from zero to 60 in how do I do esports university venue? So just as a quick background about me, I've been involved in the brick and mortar uh, esports venue space for about 16 years. We started a location in Terre Haute, Indiana called eBash Video Game Center. And it, it came from our founder being a part of a youth group at church. They started doing Halo LAN parties at their church and quickly a youth group of 10 turned into 70. So he said, there's gotta be something to this. So um, my company that I work for is called GG Circuit and we are the leaders in software services and support for esports venues. Uh, we started in 2008 doing nationwide esports tournaments uh, between gaming centers, and we have converted that into uh, providing both software consulting services and support for these esports venues for all kinds of businesses, for uh, universities, obviously, mom and pop land centers, uh, casinos, businesses, you name it, we've been a part of it. So, um, over a thousand locations have come to us to assist them with their gaming center, whether it be, uh, you know, your traditional esports venue, your land center, they're named all kinds of things. Um, and also retail locations. So we've done some custom work for folks like Best Buy and GameStop and Spotify and a few, a few others. And we just passed our 100th university that has Uda used us on some sort of platform, whether it be utilizing our software tools or to help them with consulting or to show up on site and help them with their setup. So a question that we get a lot from any customer that is interested in esports is how do I do esports? And that may be a very basic question for those that understand it. But what I would like to explain is that esports is just a very small percentage of the overall gaming community. Esports is targeted more towards modern uh, game titles where folks can participate solo as a team, and it's more of a competitive aspect. Um, but what I like to call it, it's not as snappy as a name, but it's just modern gaming. It's an esports venue is where you have PCs and consoles set up, and 
it can be a business model or it can just be a space for people to come in and play casually, competitively, to do events, to have educational seminars, et cetera. So uh, it's more commonly called esports because that's the, the trendy uh, buzzword, but just think of it as modern gaming in general. So on a university campus, I really wanna emphasize this whole idea of the gaming landscape because from an esports perspective, there's only about 15% of your gamers that are going to participate in competitions. And what we have done over the years is we have, have come up with a term called the five C's. And what the five C's are are the different types of gaming people that you will see in your venue. Uh, one of those is collectors. Collectors are folks that like to come in and game a lot, maybe on a certain game, but their goal is to uh, get achievements, get badges in game. They may be interested in doing uh, skins of different characters, which just means different outfits, different abilities. And that's like the, you know, the, the digital content within the game. But they are going to be in your space a lot and they're going to be playing maybe one game. They're going to find people with like interests and those are the collectors. The community are those folks that are going to bring people together to game. They're the folks that are be in your uh, Discord server talking. They may be participating in Twitch streaming chats. These are going to be the folks that you're going to want to lean on to create a community game night around the game, to recruit other students to come in, meet other people, play together, from form random teams, etc. Uh, those are really key people to have in your esports space that want to bring others in. Um, your consumers are going to be not only your gamers, but they're, they're going to be the people in your space that are consuming YouTube content about gaming and esports. They're going to be the ones watching their favorite player on a Twitch stream and, and learning more about the game that they like to play. Your creators are very important because those are going to be the folks that um, really educate others, whether they are creators of video content around gaming, whether they are Twitch streamers themselves, whether they are social inf influencers. And also these are gonna be the people that are going to wanna to create educational content for students to learn. They may be your students in game development. They may be folks that like to participate in creative mode of gaming and, and maybe doing play tests of their own creations. Um, the creators are very cool because you can also bring in class experiences into this, you know, uh, if you if you have an esports major, you have a media major, uh, biometrics, informatics, all of those majors can really apply uh, in this creator silo. And then finally, like I mentioned, it's the it's the folks that like to compete. It's the folks that like to come in either solo or on a team and play in tournaments, leagues, etc. <clears throat> so when you're thinking about creating an, an esports space or an esports venue, you really want to think about what's your business model going to be on campus. Is this going to be a private just for your student body? Is it going to be public for people, anyone around the area to come in and play? Um, are you going to be charging for time? Is it just going to be a free space that's open? Is it, going, is it going to be an attraction with other things that are within either your college union or your campus? Just as a quick example, I went by undergrad at Purdue University. So on different levels of their college union, they've got restaurants, they've got cafeterias, they've got a pool hall, a bowling alley, an arcade and meeting rooms and study rooms. And so is that going to, is the esports space going to be part of the overall uh, college union experience? Um, you know, what are you doing besides esports? Uh, you're going to get students that are going to want to come in the space and participate on whatever level. Um, but are you going to be doing food and beverage? Is this going to be a part of maybe like a, a family entertainment center where you've got the bowling, you've got the axe throwing, and you're throwing in esports in conjunction? And then also the activities you really need to think about. Are there gaming clubs on your campus? Are you thinking about doing leagues? Do you want to be more casual with events and uh, speakers, et cetera, or do you want to be more competitive, or do you want to do a little bit of all four? So what is your ROI? <clears throat> so in talking to a lot of universities, there are two things that, that come up a lot of times before they get to us. They either are having trouble obtaining space on campus for an, an esports arena or venue, and the second thing we find is that they're having a hard time getting buy-in from 
uh, location. So when you're doing your research, make sure to figure out what your return on investment is going to be. Is it going to be related to, can you go and get grants and get money to put in the esports space? Is this going to be something to cater to new students when um, they looking for a campus that is supporting esports? Is this an alumni donation thing? Or like I said, in regards to charging for this esports space, um, is that going to be your return on investment? So I mentioned we just hit the 100 university mark, the, the folks that use our software or our consulting. So on average, we're looking at about 65% of university esports venues have 25 PCs on average. And this can be anywhere from someone that just has five PCs for their esports team up to we've seen upwards to 60 to 70 PCs in their location. Uh, about 30% of those that use our software utilize a single sign-on uh, authentication method where that would be an alternative to creating user accounts where they can use their existing student uh, logins and passwords that they may use uh, on their laptops or in computer labs, and we do have that ability. About 25% of our customers have partnered with us in some sort of fashion for consulting, but uh, this high number of about 90% of our esports venues that work with us do make this a public space. And the other thing is that there's, there's really no target right now in regards to college campuses of who is running the show with esports. It can be all across the board. We've had everywhere from specific esports departments to IT teams to sports and recreation and student affairs all being involved and providing a venue on campus. A few more uh, stats, and we're, we're pulling this uh, directly from our data that we're tracking in our software, but we have about 2,200 PCs have our software installed on college campuses. This is in the US, the UK, Australia, and uh, New Zealand, I believe is all the areas that we have colleges that run our software. We have about 850,000 hours logged by students on these campuses with about 50, 57,000 students that have come into these spaces and participated on some level. So again, you know, I've been a, I've been a part of these ACUI uh, panels before, and I wanted just to touch on a few things that I feel like come up over and over in regards to esports and how to do things in an esports venue. Um, the first thing that I want to mention is tournaments. It seems to be more of a trend that uh, colleges are creating tournaments more as a, uh, a for fun activity where they're creating brackets. And one thing, and I really do think that it's more of a marketing opportunity than anything. It helps get people in the door. It helps them experience the space and hopefully come back on a casual, competitive, educational level. Uh, what I will say about tournaments, especially if you're not really a gamer or familiar with the title that folks are wanting to do the tournament for, really lean on your students, really reach out to the gaming communities and the clubs for people that are specialized in this game, uh, whatever game it is that you're doing, because a lot of times it requires you know, expertise in what game modes and how to set up the game, how to get people into lobbies. Uh, as well as watching the games, making sure they're legitimate and filling out the tournament brackets. Leagues is another popular thing because, you know, the, the co-rec gyms, the recreational leagues for traditional sports want to do the same thing as esports. And what I would say is that, you know, there's no right way to do it. It de depends on what you're looking to spend and what you're looking to do. There are uh, a lot of companies out there that provide free league opportunities like Smash GG, which is um, owned by Microsoft. There are There is Battlefy, there is Tournament. Um, all of those have bracketing systems, but they also have league abilities, uh, all the way up to folks like a company called Mission Control, which does a... Um, mobile app that you can utilize to kind of control your leagues. What I would say in conjunction to an esports space with, um, with a league is that if people are doing these games remote, there is a, usually a high percentage of folks that either forfeit their match or they just don't show up. 
So having an esports space and actually forcing a team or individuals to come into the space, play another team, uh, may lower that level of forfeiture or people not showing up because you're requiring them to get somewhere and play. Game licenses. <clears throat> um, from the perspective of modern day games, many games that are popular are free to play. So you are not required to have game licenses in your esports space if you don't choose. It just depends on what games you are offering up uh, to your users. Within our GG Leap management software, uh, the players have the flexibility. They can utilize their own accounts for uh, games from home or you as the university would be responsible for purchasing your game licenses. And there are a lot of different game libraries out there, such as Steam and Origin and Epic, that hold certain game titles that you would have to create accounts for. Um, again, that's totally up to you for what you want to do. Our software has the flexibility to manage those game licenses, um, but you're not required to purchase a game license per PC, especially if it's not a super popular game, you can always use our game licensing feature. And uh, we can talk a lot more about that uh, if you'd like to set up a consultation or email us a question about it, or we can get into it in the question and answer session. And then the final thing that we'll be focused on the rest of this um, presentation is really, how do you control the gaming environment? And there are uh, two main things that you really need one being management software, and the second, which I feel is most important, is diskless boot uh, technology, which I'm going to be talking about now. So the biggest problem that we see in the esports venue space is that these games constantly change and software updates and happens all the time. So I want to uh, kind of visualize this in more of an animated GIF where I've got a student worker going to each of these PCs and they are downloading a patch, let's say that's 100 gigabytes, which is a pretty normal occurrence. So this student worker to get the game updated so that everybody can play it on its most up-to-date modes has to go to each of these PCs and download the patch. Um, each game may have one or two patches a week. Uh, so you're having a student worker go to each of these PCs, they're spending a lot of time and effort to make sure that these games are updated. The, the risk that you have there is that somebody coming into your space and has a poor user experience because they sit down on a random PC that may or may not have been updated with the latest Fortnite patch, and they either have to move to another PC or wait for that patch to be um, uh, downloaded. <clears throat> so, Diskless boot technology, basically it's, I don't want to get into too much of the technical piece of it, but at a minimum, it saves you about 15,000 a year, depending on how many PCs you have. And that's just goes through uh, staff costs, basically. Um, you update one PC with all the game updates and it utilizes an on-premise server to send the rest of those uh, game updates to the PCs from the server. You are not required to have hard drives on those PCs, but at a bottom line is that it's just going to save you time from dealing with all the daily game updates that happen, and you're not required to have a, a, a student worker or an IT person come in every day and check what, what's been updated. You can find that information online, get those things updated, do it one time, and update your entire PC floor. So the second technology is uh, management software. So this is what we've been doing for about six years. Um, I, I, I'm remiss enough if I don't say our product for diskless boot technology is called GG Rock. Our, <clears throat> our software title for management software is called GG Leap. Basically what it does is it locks down the desktop. It only offers up uh, certain games and apps that you want your, your gamers to see forces them to log in to the, the client, tracks their time, tracks everything that they're doing. It tracks everything your employees are doing. Um, it's, it's a cloud-based software. Uh, you know, between GG Leap and GG Rock, they are not required uh, to be purchased both to work in a space, but we would recommend it. 
Uh, we do have point of sale integration and we're the only management software where people can actually pay for their time at the screen through Square. And I know that many campuses utilize their own point of sale. That's where we are currently. Um, but it, we're getting more and more towards self-service uh, versus needing an employee to actually work uh, the counter at, at one of these spaces. I could spend a whole webinar talking about what GG Leap does, but the biggest thing that we've done versus our competitors is, is utilize the player incentives. So we do that through automatic stat tracking, through leaderboards, through uh, what I would call automated events, which are more like an arcade high score list versus a bracketed tournament where someone can participate on whatever level and how much that they want to. And uh, we've been doing this for a while now. We've been doing this for six years and uh, we now have some backing where our software development is ramping up even more, and we're really excited about some of the things we're offering in our software over the next few months. <clears throat> One of the major factors, you know, I was talking about what, what is your ROI you know, within our software is that we have a functionality for distri distributed computing uh, revenue within our software, which means when your PCs are on and they're not being utilized for gaming, you are earning uh, money on the back end. So if you have a down week where people aren't coming in as much as normal, you still have revenue on the back end where you are earning. Now, this can be earned in different ways, and we have that set up for because we have a lot of agreements with companies to do distributed computing. Um, you know, on campus, there's a little bit of uh, fear a bit about crypto mining. And what I would say is that is one method that we can utilize where we do crypto mining on the back end. However, we are not giving you crypto coins. We are just utilizing your computer computing power in our network. And we're providing you cash based on the market value of the crypto coin. So what I would say for that is that we have earned over a million dollars in the last six months by providing this ability to all of our customers. And we're giving a 90-10 split in regards to that revenue. So the customer earned 90, we earned 10. And there are some universities that are utilizing our software that are utilizing this functionality, which is optional. And they're earning up to about $5,000 a month just by utilizing this software functionality. We also have other pr programs in the works, such as uh, digital gift card kick kickbacks, et cetera, which are coming out very soon because we've managed to stay in this business for 16 years and we know how tough it can be, which we'll talk about here in a moment. And um, basically what we're trying to do is provide other streams of revenue for esports spaces to earn um, besides just gaming revenue or however you are using the space. <clears throat> so the workload, um, I would say that if you are a, a, a person who may not be technical, you know, the workload of an esports space can be rather overwhelming, uh, depending on how many people are involved and who you've hired, students, IT, et cetera. Um, you could be the, the accountant, you could be the marketer, you could be the technologist, you could be the social media manager. And it, it can be a uh, overwhelming workload in regards to this esports venue stuff. We went through and, and just thought about our years in the esports space and all of the things that we do to make the business run. <clears throat> and anywhere from financial projections to network configuration to things that are important like security audits on campus, accessibility testing. Uh, those are things that we've gone through with the majority of our customers to the ongoing day-to-day -day stuff like diskless boot game updates, handling customer issues, customer rewards, prize redemption. And where we are going with this is that, you know, we, we have probably done over a hundred consulting gigs in the last three years. And we've got it down to a science now that we can take almost uh, almost 60% of the workload off of esports spaces by utilizing our consulting uh, client, our consulting services, as well as our remote maintenance. Um, all of our consulting team has over double digit years in the esports space, and we're trying to help folks succeed because 
I don't want to, you know, offend anybody and you could be a, a network engineer or, you know, you could have the best business model in the world. But at this point, esports spaces and esports venues still are difficult to run. And so we're trying to provide our services to take that workload off that you may not be familiar with and let you handle, you know, the, the vision of the esports venue space on campus. So in addition to that, uh, we, we haven't really marketed this too much lately, but it's becoming part popular not only with universities, but also with folks like traditional sports complexes. And those are esports venue packages. So we, we have two that are available right now. One is uh, an acronym we're calling Alpha. And basically what we do with this package is we provide everything involved with exception of wall decor and audio video systems. Um, we provide the PCs, the monitors, the desk, the chairs, the peripherals, our management software, our diskless boot software, server hardware. Uh, we send our team on campus and uh, set it all up for you. We train your employees. Once we're done and we feel like everything's in, in order, we go back and we remote into your server every day and we do the daily game updates so that your student workers can just open the door and be ready for business. And we also provide 24 seven uh, private channel support, usually through Discord. Um, but if you have any questions or problems as we go, we'll get to you as soon as possible. So <clears throat> you can see the breakdown of pricing there. Um, it is, it's 3000 per station. Again, that's PC hardware, desk chairs, our onsite setup, travel and lodging, employee training, initial configurations. And then on a monthly basis, we also charge $35 per station per month. So that is um, our subscription-based model, our management software, our diskless boot software subscription, the daily maintenance and the private channel support. And if I could go back just for a moment and, and, and talk about the workload again, what we are finding more often than not is that if a college comes to us and says, hey, all I need is your, uh, you know, your software tools and your server, and uh, they kind of get down the road a few months and then they find they don't want to do all of this workload or the IT teams already has a full plate and they don't want to do everything. So a lot of times they will reno renegotiate the contract and actually have us do those things that are technology minutia that they don't want to have to deal with on a daily basis. This last thing that I'll talk about is, is something we're really excited about, and we're, we're about a week away from announcing this at IAPA, which is an amusement expo in Orlando. Um, you know, your esports venue is only as good as the, the business folks and the students that are running it. Um, and so what we have tried to do is create an esports attraction we're calling Omega, which stands for Online Multiplayer Esports Gaming Attraction. And this is <clears throat> perfect for someone that just wants to drop in esports and not have to worry about it at all. Um, you know, we've taken those lessons over the years and what we have built this into is, is almost like a quick play esports venue where we're going to have uh, card swipes for be able to people to pay. We're going to have a mobile mobile app for people to tap in and log in. It's going to be as 99% service self service as we can make it. You may just need an employee there to keep an eye on the hardware so that it doesn't walk off. Um, it's a small square foot uh, footprint. Basically, it's for those folks that want to quick play. They want to jump in for a half an hour to an hour, participate in limited amount of games, and we do an hourly prize drop. Which, which means uh, a non-monetary coin that we provide and they earn those over time. And everybody that participates each hour has a percentage chance to win that prize drop. And then as they accumulate that over time, they can redeem those coins for digital gift cards that go directly to their email. So uh, we're trying to make this an exciting way to come in and do esports for a quick play. So it's almost like a modern arcade. Um, the biggest thing with this is that we're targeting a one year return on investment for Omega. And that's at 30% utilization, which means of all the hours that you are open, 30% of those hours are filled with gamers at each station. So 
I believe the, the stat was if it's like a 12 to eight opening that you would have each station, uh, at least three hours per station is utilized by gamers, which is 30% utilization. And that's the average for a, a traditional land center. Um, so we're doing these Omegas. It's a, it's a, like I said, it's a completely new version of our management software uh, targeted to those with an existing revenue model. And uh, anywhere from a six station pod to a 12 station pod. If you are a college union, really evaluate what your four arcade machines and maybe a couple claw machines are making because it's not only going to be gaming revenue, but there's also going to be the distributed computing revenue built into the model. And we're, we're really trying to make this a more traditional way to inject esports into an existing business model. Um, <clears throat> so we will pass this out. What I will do really quickly is I will um, open up the chat and add in uh, a couple of links here. And I know we'll, we'll share it later, but uh, this is our interest form uh, URL. The, we're getting ready to release a uh, How to Start an Esports Venue book in the beginning of the uh, December, and that is at thatesportsbook.com. And then obviously you can uh, email us anytime to do like a, a discussion. We love to talk esports. We love to see what universities are doing and we like to help them obviously as much as possible. So you can email us at, at sales.ggcircuit.com. And uh, you know, after this slide, there is a, a promo for what we're doing with Omega and you guys can take a look at that. Uh, actually, I might be able to, yeah, I'll be able to copy this link in here as well. So you guys can watch this video on your time. Um, so with that, that is, that is the uh, quick and dirty talking about university esports spaces, what we're seeing and where we see things going. So with that, I'll open it up to questions. Uh, Jason, check your chat. Make sure it's yeah. set for everyone. Yeah, I got it. Here's the uh, here's the interest form. Here is the esports book, and here is our email. Okay, so the question out uh, is: Could you talk about space design? I have square footage, but I'm not sure how to design it. Great question. So, <clears throat> again, you know, we have done multiple locations on our own. Uh, our team of consultants—that uh, is really their specialty and what they do. Basically, what you can do is, you know, when you decide you want to utilize our consulting, we will help you design the space. Uh, we will do a, a CAD design based on your layout and how many stations you want to put in. Uh, doesn't really matter if it's PC or console. We have the kind of the measurements of what a normal space will look like per gamer. Uh, we also do help you with understanding what internet you need and, and what understanding your, uh, the details of your internet, the configuration and electrical design, uh, how many drops you might need for a certain number of PCs. And that's all within uh, what we can provide from a consulting perspective. HVAC as well. So while I wait for other questions, feel free to chime in. You know, we just uh, recently went to the University of Miami of Ohio uh, to complete their space. Uh, we've done a uh, University of Kentucky recently and University of Northern Kentucky. Uh, we just went down to Missouri to do a space there. Uh, next question, you mentioned a single sign-on option for GG Leap software. How does that typically work with university logins? Um, how the single sign-on works within our software is, uh, I'm gonna forget the, the technology. I believe it's called in common. So <clears throat> we have an in common method to do authentication. We also have a XAML uh, method to do authentication, X-A-M-L. And basically within the GGLeap web administrator, you should have a 
URL or a, a web address where people come in and do that authentication. Um, so you will provide that information within the ggleap uh, web administrator. And basically what happens within ggleap is instead of the normal login, it will pop up your university single sign-on um, login. And you can set it to once they are uh, authenticated through single sign-on, <clears throat> that you can add hours to their account without having to do anything. This is especially um, beneficial when you're not charging for the space and you just want folks to come in and when they log in, get three hours on their account, which is usually about the average gaming time. Um, it's, it's fairly simple. Okay, we currently use a diskless boot system. What benefits does GG Rock over other services? Um, for, for me, I am not your diskless boot expert. What I would say is that with GG Rock, um, it utilizes a caching system when you're updating these games, which means as the game is utilized, you, uh, it, it launches faster and faster on these PCs. Um, the second one would be, would benefit would be that any PC in your arena can be your, um, can be what we call the super client, which is a mode where the PC is in to um, update the games. <clears throat> so you can be sitting at the front or the back and you turn on the, the method and it's a lot easier than our competitors. Um, Third, you can have multiple uh, images that you can pull from. Uh, and obviously, Liam, I can provide you, you know, with, with someone to talk to specifically about all of the benefits because um, you're right, it is in early access. We just, we've, we're working on this for about a year. We have 100 locations utilizing our GG Rock Distless Boot. And it, it's as 1.0 as it can get right now. We just haven't done a formal announcement. Um, from our support of, of GG Rock, um, we have a team that specializes in GG, GG Rock where uh, we would say that it's kind of tier two support. Basically, someone comes in and talks to our 24 seven chat and they get connected with somebody on our GG Rock team. Um, from a consulting perspective and our daily updates, we do have a team that <clears throat> it'll be a separate chat with just a private chat with your team uh, where we get requests for new games that we can install, the patches, and we give you a daily update of remoting into your server and doing all the game updates. And then if you have any other issues besides that or need uh, any new games or troubleshooting, we're there to help you. Would competition tournaments just be between other colleges utilizing GG Circuit or are students able to compete outside of that network of users? <clears throat> it really depends on what you want to do. Uh, it can be inter-campus competitions. It can be, uh, you know, if you want to set up a time for another esports team to, to compete, you know, you don't necessarily need GG Leap for that. Um, but, you know, it, it's, again, it's, it's kind of up to you of what your business model is going to be and how you want to do um, um, competitions. Obviously, you're going to be online because the modern games need an internet connection more often than not. And so they will be able to play against whoever is online at the same time doing tournaments, competitions. You know, if you're connected with an entity like <clears throat> ESL or AVGL, which is more college-based. Um, again, you know, you don't need GG Leap to, to do competitions. You just need a PC with the game installed. Um, GG Leap is more for controlling your esports environment, making sure your students or your customers aren't getting into Windows and messing anything up. Uh, you know, obviously with each reboot of GG Rock, you go back to that pristine image. And uh, so if anybody tries to install anything or anything like that, our software is focused more on the day-to-day -day running an esports venue uh, versus creating tournaments and matches and competitions. But since you're online, you can compete with anyone.
So to be honest, I'm discouraged to pursue mining as I feel our IT will shut it down. It's great to hear you have universities that have passed that barrier. Any advice as we look into this option? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just kind of like buy-in for the esports space itself. Um, there, what I can I can tell you is the um, the positives far outweigh the negatives in regards to you know a revenue bottom line. I'm not going to give it examples, but I can tell you that there's going to be one university that has 40 PCs in their venue. And they're going to earn fifty to sixty thousand dollars this year just for having the the crypto mining functionality on. Now, you know I haven't talked a lot about it, but <clears throat> you can do this on your own again if your university stands by it. But we have done the work in utilizing our software that you know we do the hardware evaluations to make sure the temperature is at at, at safe levels. We've done all of the wallet work. We do all of the payouts and you don't have to do anything with GG Leap other than to click a, an on button for this functionality because whenever somebody logs out, the mining immediately goes into uh, uh, working. And so the only thing, Cody, that I could tell you is I would have to connect you with existing universities that are using it because that's really not our um, you know, thing to talk to upper management or whatever of a campus on, on whether or not they support it. What I can tell you is, like I said in the presentation, you're not earning cryptocurrency at this moment. We have thoughts to do that, but we're a, a publicly traded company now under uh, eSports Entertainment Group. So there's a lot of legalese and red tape that goes through uh, crypto mining. But we, we are earning the Ethereum and we are paying you back out the market value. You do not hold on to any cryptocurrency. We're just utilizing your computing power. Um, so basically you're letting us utilize your computers um, <clears throat> to earn cash for your esports venue. Now, with the different technologies and the different coins and all that stuff, you know, I'm not an expert in that area. But what I will say is we've been approached by distributed computing. You know, someone said something like, uh, you know, DNA strands and, and for the betterment of, of technology, we have companies that we're connected to that if cryptocurrency doesn't become as, uh, you know, profitable, we'll switch over to those methods as well. So um, it's, it's a it's a very diverse way that we're trying to bring revenue to these esports spaces to earn money outside of, uh, of what you've decided your your return on investment is. Um, but I'll, I'll keep your name, Cody, and I'll, I'll reach out to you after this uh, webinar. Kind of related to the crypto question, if there's an opportunity, I might talk about how these folks could work on getting buy-in from up the org chart. I'm kind of kind of. Um, <clears throat> Oh, that was from Steve directly. Uh, I will, you know, I think UCI, which again, we helped open their doors in 2016. They're kind of a, um, kind of the gold standard in regards to uh, on-campus esports. They have a great resource online called Tools for Schools. Um, I don't know if they specifically talk about that, but um, I'm happy to, uh, Again, provide contacts that I know utilize our crypto mining uh, methodology. Okay, in, in addition to gaming stations, do you also provide information or advice on setting up a streaming station booth as well? Yes, absolutely. In fact, that was a topic we were talking about this morning as we have a couple of universities who are, are going through that alpha esports venue pack package that we're going to customize to provide them um, streaming hardware. Uh, again, not all gaming centers and not all land centers uh, do streaming, but it, it's becoming more and more popular um, versus your, your standard gaming PC. Usually streaming is, is a higher end PC with a lot of different peripherals beyond just mouse, keyboard, and headset. Uh, you know, uh, lighting, uh, cam onboard cameras, uh, software like uh, Streamlabs and, and OBS and um, XSplit that are needed to do uh, streaming. So 
We do provide advice around that. Uh, we also provide packages that include streaming setups, if that would be something that you're interested in. So um, we did, can definitely do that. Sorry, Jeremy, I skipped your question. Is there a security white sheet available for all the systems? Um, <clears throat> depends on what you mean there. We can obviously provide you just kind of one sheets of general about our software. Um, if you have a specific security audit that you need answered, we are happy to go through that exercise for you. We've done enough customers with security audits that we kind of, you know, copy and paste our answers now, not on all, but, uh, you know, we can get it done a lot faster. Um, if, if that meets your needs, we're happy to do that. Um, uh, or if you just have a general questions you'd like to send to us, we can provide you uh, any, any security related information that, that you feel is necessary to uh, use for your esports space. So we got about um, 10 minutes left. Uh, you know, uh, we're obviously very bullish on esports. We've been doing this for a long time. Uh, we're excited to see more and more universities come on board. I, I went and took a look at uh, our sales pipeline. Um, and within the last month, we have had about 23 universities engage us in uh, bringing esports on campus, whether it's software or these venue packages. And it's not slowing down. You know, obviously, we had a lot of interest in 2019. And like everybody, those kind of went to the wayside during uh, the beginning of the pandemic. But those are now, you know, starting to come back and, and uh, fast and furious. And so if this is something you're on the fence for in regards to esports, sooner or later, your, your competitive campuses and, and those that are rivals in your conference are going to be doing it. I, I really believe that this will become uh, kind of standard to go along with traditional sports on campus. And, and it is popular. It's ever changing. Uh, you know, what's popular games this year won't, won't be the same within one to two years. So uh, it will always be evolving. With your hardware packages, what hardware or equipment do you typically utilize? And if external sponsorship became an option, how could that be integrated? Yeah, that's a great question. So <clears throat> we have done work with all the major manufacturers uh, and we have close connections with them. With the current state of affairs in esports hardware, we've basically had to go with who has hardware available because it's anemic in these uh, in markets right now. With the alpha packages that we have um, sold over the last month, we have been going through HP Omen, which is their, uh, their gaming models for, uh, for PCs. Again, we've done this for many years. We want to make sure you have the best high-end uh, hardware that is available. Um, we go through currently go through respawn desks and chairs right now. Um, and then we go through Lenovo to do our diskless boot servers. They've been a great partner for us um, uh, promoting our software and also have gotten ingrained into uh, college esports in general. Um, so that is our packages. What I would, what would say, and, that, and, you know, and that's always subject to change. <clears throat> if you do an external sponsorship, that's really up to the campus what you want to provide to your student body. Um, these are our packages as they are, and this is what we provide right now. Um, so what I would suggest to you is that if you're doing sponsorship, you're going to be going to multiple companies to sourcing everything versus coming to us, purchasing a package, and we provide it at your doorstep with everything. So you only have one person to call versus four or five people to call. We're going to set it up. We're going to maintain it. We're going to support it. Um, <clears throat> what I would suggest to you is that if you're, if you're going to source your own stuff, um, you know, GG Leap is kind of like the windows of esports. We're the operating system to run an esports venue. It doesn't matter what hardware you utilize, um, GG Leap will still run. 
as well as uh, GG Rock, our diskless boot software. So we can integrate into any brand. Um, it's just your decision of how much work you want to do sourcing everything. All right. Well, if there's no other questions, um, you know, obviously you have our email that you can reach out. Again, we're happy to talk to you about uh, your overall plans for esports and hoping we can be a part of that and work with y'all. Steve and Justin, thank you again for the time and uh, thank you, ACUI community. Jason, thank you very much for this extremely informative session. Um, I'm going to put the survey in the uh, chat for folks. If you get a chance, please do that. I just did that. It's a Qualtrics survey. Uh, Jason, I want to thank you for the dive into esports development on our campuses. I, I, if you all have noticed, Jason has also taken advantage of our communities of practice, and you, you can literally reach out to him there if you do have a question or want to connect with him. He has been active in on-campus recreation and leisure, the technology community, and the facilities and operations community of practice. So he's an easy person to get in touch with, and he's a reliable source of information, not only about their own company, but about resources out there in the broader landscape of eSports. So um, take advantage of their skills and his talents, and uh, just thank you to all for being here today and uh, being good listeners and asking good questions. Jason, have a great day. Thank you, everybody. And we'll sign off here. I want to. I do want to mention uh, you will be receiving a, a email from Jason, um, where he will provide you the uh, entire um, uh, presentation today. We'll also have that available and let you know when it's available in the online learning library for access for all of your members, uh, members of campuses, and uh, uh, so those resources will be out there for you. So thanks again, Jason. Great job. Wonderful to have you here today. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.